Thank you for listening. I am Mike Strauss, a.k.a. Strauss 21, with Chicago's number one underground comedian, Apollo Taj Mahal. We appreciate it, guys. If you like the interview, and I know you will, be sure to go ahead and listen to the full episode. You can find it on our website, didyouseethatshit.com, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, pretty much wherever you find your favorite podcast. Be sure to listen to the whole episode. We appreciate it very much, guys. I, I want to welcome uh, Chris Honeycutt. He's a middleweight fighter in Bellator right now. He has a record of 10-2, and two, and uh, we're going to find out what Chris has uh, got going on in 2018. What's going on, man? Well, not much. Just, uh, you know, just training. Uh had an opportunity to take a little bit of a break and shoot down to Long Beach this past weekend, so that was that was fun. Business or pleasure? Um, well, I mean, I worked out a little bit, but it was mainly just pleasure. I, we, uh, me and my girlfriend got to, you know, go check out the St. Mary's uh, ship and or Queen Mary and all that. I'm sorry, it's Queen Mary, not St. Mary. You know, it's so crazy, man. It's a, such a small world, and it's so weird how things work because my uh, my 12 year old daughter. She, for the last three days, Chris, she has been talking about the Queen Mary and how she wants to go. She, you know, we're in Chicago here, but she's she's really into that right now. And here you are. You know, you mentioned that. What are, what are the chances of that? That's crazy, right? Yeah. No, I mean, it's, uh, you know, until you go and, you know, you actually learn a little bit about the history of it and, you know, and get to you see it firsthand. It's, uh, it's amazing that... Um, you know, something like that can be built. I mean, that that the the I, the engine room was just extravagant. I just couldn't imagine, you know, the the complexity and uh, you know the the the, the raw size of it. It was it was absolutely huge. It was like ten rooms just for one motor. Yeah, some of the some of the things that people were able to do or just construct and build, like you know, Egypt is another thing that comes to mind. Just mind blowing. You know, like I don't know how do they do it. I don't even know where to begin. You know. <laughs> But um, yeah, man, what's going yeah. on? Has uh, has Bellator have they came at you with any uh, any fights or anything like that? Oh, uh, I've been asking. Um, I mean, I, I think I'm going to be be on the borderline of annoying at the moment. I, uh, <laughs> well, I've been asking you. I mean, the you know the after my last my last play, I thought it was a pretty disappointing loss. I um, you know I, I I disagree with the outcome, obviously, but. Um, you know, even since that moment, it's just like, well, how long do I have to wait until I can get back in the cage? Or, you know, as far as the fact that I lost, I don't know if there's a year kind of suspended for X amount of days. And I was told that that wasn't too big of a deal because I only got hit three or four times. So a doctor would have no problem, you know, signing me off to, to fight kind of real quick afterwards. But um, pretty much since then, since five minutes after the fight, I've been trying to figure out how fast I can get back in the cage and I still haven't heard anything yet but I, I'm, I'm getting the uh, we'll let you know in a couple of days here of the word so hopefully um, you know that comes to fruition and, and, and I can get in the, another fight camp here shortly yeah that'd be great man I thought you looked really good in your last outing man uh, you know Lovato he's a tough dude you know no shame in that you guys had a really interesting fight you know n- there's no shame in going 15 rounds with a guy who might be one of the two or three best jujitsu guys in the entire world. You know, that's not too bad. Yeah, I uh, I think so much the, the part that I kind of makes me aggravated is that um, you know they do those pre talks with the with the with the commentators the day before the fight, and they kind of talk about well, you know, what's your game plan, this and that. And my game plan wasn't to really even. I mean, I got a couple of takedowns. Just so I wanted the refs to see that you know I could take them down whenever I wanted. It's just. Once I took him down, I kind of floated around for like a, I would say like four or five seconds, and I could already see him, you know, transitioning so fast from one thing to another. So I, I uh, let it come back to the feet. But it's like, but I told the commentators like the, the goal is to get him against the cage and to make him work. And the mo- and I and I was going, and I went into the fight, you know, ready for a dog fight. But he was so accepting of just being pinned against the cage. And he is six four, so I mean, it's just natural that his arm's gonna go over my head, uh, and I kind of anticipated that. I uh, I just didn't think that they would continuously give him the offensive advantage, being with his back against the cage. I guess for a submission attempt or whatever, you know, three-time world champion, 
he never progressed his position out, not even for a moment. Um, so that's the part where I, I pretty much get my most my frustration is that I actually thought that I was clearly winning all three rounds just through the fact that I was I was the one you know pushing the pace, I was dictating where the fight went, and he showed no ability to get off the cage. He, um, I, it, it's almost. I, I, it almost felt like a, um, like an episode of uh, like the Twilight Zone when, <laughs> when losing that losing that fight, and and not until watching the commentating and I kind of get I kind of get the idea of how he could be initiating the offense. But you would think that because he's a three time world champion, after 30, 40 seconds go by and he's not able to progress the situation, then it, it should start you know, falling back into my favor, considering that he's the one, you know, with his back against the cage. I, since the day, first day I've learned fighting, they, the rule of thumb is, is if you can't get off the cage, you're losing. I mean, that is it, you know, and if you're the aggressor, you should be the one winning the fight, generally speaking. That's one of the big problems with mixed martial arts, man, is that the rules are open to way too much subjectivity, you know, and guys aren't going to see fights the same way. We need to fix it. I'm not. I don't know how. <laughs> I just know we need to fix it um, because you guys, yeah, work, you, I mean, you guys work too hard. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it, it is my fault in the end because when because I, I mean, I, I probably didn't have the greatest camp going into it uh, this, this winter. I guess for the nation, it's been kind of filled with the flu and the, you know and sickness or whatever. And I, so I was, I was on a couple of antibiotics throughout the camp, and um, so I mean, but. That's that. I, I went into the fight, you know, ready for the dog fight, ready to work really, really hard. And I, I mean, he kind of put me out of my game by being so accepting of being pushed against the cage. And I was kind of like, oh, all right, well, I got a good view of the clock right here. I can see it run down. He's not really trying to get off. So I'll just, uh, you know, hang out here for 15, 20 seconds until he tries to start the fight off the cage. And then, you know, I'll. You know, he'll move off the cage, we'll do some dirty boxing, then go back to the neutral. I know he was a little more active on the hands and kicks, but none of them were landing. They were kind of just, you know, going up and over my head, or, or they were coming short, so they are happening just in front of me. I mean, I guess my volume really wasn't that high, but, uh, I mean, he only landed three or four punches. I probably only landed, you know, three or four myself. Um but I felt like I did get the takedowns. He got one takedown within four seconds. I was, you know, back up on my feet. I transitioned him back into the cage and then took him down and finished the round on top. Yeah, you sure did, but you're only 29 years old. I think your best years are still ahead of you. I think that a fight like that with Lovato, I think you're going to grow from it, and I think I think it was needed. But what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean I'm... I, I honestly think that if I were to fight Lovato again, I, it wouldn't. Even, the fight wouldn't even go the distance. I, I feel like now, I feel like his game plan was so passive aggressive that I could just walk through him. I just, uh, you know, like I said, I just, I went from, you know, this is going to be a battle to, oh, this is going to be now an easy win because he's just letting me, you know, it's almost like I was like I was sparring somebody that was in camp and I was like their third fresh partner and they were already exhausted. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I could feel that he wasn't, I could feel that he would not, not necessarily was like super tired, but I could tell that he was, um, you know, kind of conserving, like he didn't want to push that pace. And I was accepting of that because I, I, I felt like I was in the dominant position the entire fight. I feel like I only backed up really a couple of seconds maybe in, in, in uh, the second round. But, um, yeah, no, I think any time, well, I agree to say not everyone, but I feel like you know, most fighters, you know, take a loss. There's, uh, you know, there's another, there's another spark added to the, you know, to the fire. There's um, a little more motivation to, uh, you know, work hard for the next one and and learn from it. And that, you know, that goes for myself. It's like now I'm, you know, it's like I'll never let that happen again. I'll never, you know, be in a fight and then someone just kind of, you just kind of feel someone, you know, not really try as hard as you so you just fight to their level um i i i, I mean i look back now and just like why was i even thinking that way if i if he was doing that why wouldn't i just you know you, you know come back out throw a few punches and then tie that up with him because i don't have to worry about him getting his back off the cage and then you know do some dirty boxing in there versus you know just smothering him against the cage and uh you know just i guess 
assuming that the refs thought the guy with his back against the cage was losing. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, Lovago's a great fighter. I mean, he's a, if not necessarily a great fighter, he's definitely a great jiu-jitsu artist. I mean, he's three-time world champion. I mean, that, that's something that's talked about. Oh, yeah. I think that's a, 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 big, a big reason why when he maybe did have his uh, arm over it. Because, I mean, I, I don't know where else his arm could have gone. I mean, it wasn't like he was, perp- I don't think, purposely to try and initiate a punch. It's like, I don't know where else a six foot four person would put their arm on a 5'10", you know, wrestler, sticks his head in his arm, and, it, and uh, you know, drives him against the cage. It's, I mean, really the only other option was to just maybe put his hand straight up in the air, and that just doesn't make sense. Yeah, <laughs> that would look but, a little uh, weird, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm in a perfect fight. I mean, if I was 6'2", I would probably use my head and try to pinch his arm in, but you know, that, that, that's not practical when you're going against someone that's so tall. Mm-hmm. You know that. Yeah, well, uh, I think that you're going to bounce back, man. Uh, I can't yeah, wait for your so next crazy, fight. Man, and, uh, you know, with all these, these new so guys coming to Bellator, there's so many exciting my, uh, matchups, you know, so many possibilities now. So uh, I can't wait to see who Joe's got in mind for you, man, Mary because how she I know that you're going to bounce back. I just want to see who is going to be the one that has to fight you. Right now, yeah, yeah. And I mean, here I would you like are. to get another you know, year. You mentioned that. Like, what, are, what are the chances of that? That's 20, crazy, 20, right? 16, yeah, well, four fights, I mean, it's you know, it's, uh, you know, only Lovato was my second fight last, last year. And I, you know, I'd be lying if I was, you know, I wasn't going into the fight for financial reasons. It's amazing that, you know, two fights a year is, I mean, when you're 20, 20, 29 years old, I mean, that's uh, I'm kind of reaching like. The beginning you know, of the, my ultimate the prime, prime of fighting. Like, uh, I want to be fighting. You know, the, 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 you know, the roll five, five or six times, times a year. I mean, that's, if I it was up to me, I'd fight like ten uh, rooms like times a year for like one motor. Um, yeah, so some of the some, some of the things that people were able to do so, are just well, construct like and build. Like you know, Egypt is another thing that comes to mind, just mind blowing. You know, like uh, how do we do it? I don't even know what to do. You know, but um, yeah, know what's going on? Has has Bellator have they came at you with any any fights or anything like that? Well, I've been asking in a way. Yeah, no, I feel you, man. I feel you. I say all the time how criminally underpaid you guys are as athletes. It's uh, it's not even funny. Did you happen to see just yesterday, man? Bellator let like thirteen dudes go. Thirteen fighters? Yeah, they let go of thirteen guys, man. Oh wow, that's crazy. You know, you didn't know that moment. Yeah. Um, Some of the bigger names, man, like Francis Carmont, uh, Steve Cazola. That one surprised the shit out of me. Fernando Gonzalez. He's, they cut. Yeah, that's too big of a deal because crazy. Three or four times. Yeah, that's a doctor. That's a problem. I'm not. That surprises me. Fight. Yeah, I was surprised with a couple of those names, but, um, man. But uh, they got plans for you. I know they do because I think when you look at the Bellator middle middleweight roster, I, I mean, you have one of the really best records yeah, in the but, entire um, division. So, the, uh, yeah, yeah, no, we'll, we'll let you know I mean, in a couple I'm of just, days. You're I'm, I'm waiting for it. So, hopefully, you know, that comes to fruition and I can get another fight to here shortly. It's yeah, that'd be great, out. man. I thought you looked really good in your last outing, man. Uh, you know, Lovato, he's a tough dude. You know, no shame in that. You guys had a really interesting fight. You know, there's no shame in going 15 rounds with a guy who might be one of the two or three best jujitsu guys in the entire world. You know, that's not too bad. Yeah, I, uh, I think so much the, the part that I kind of makes me aggravated is that um you know they do those pre talks with the with the with the commentators the day before the fight and they kinda of talk about well you know what's your game plan this and that. And my game plan wasn't to really hear even I mean I got a couple takedowns just so I wanted the refs to see that you know I could take them down whenever I wanted. It's just once I took him down, I kind of floated around for like a, I was doing like four or five seconds, and I could already see him, you know, transitioning so fast from one thing to another, so I, I uh, let it come back to the feet. But it's like what I told the commentators, like, the goal is to get him against the cage and to make him work. And the mo- and, I, and, I was, and I went into the fight, you know, ready for a dog fight, but he was so accepting of just being pinned against the cage and he is 6'4", so it's just natural that his arm's going to go over my head, and I kind of anticipated that. I uh, I just didn't think that they would continuously give him the offensive advantage of being with his back against the cage, I guess, for a submission attempt or whatever. He's a three-time world champion. He never progressed his position out, not even for a moment. Um, so that's the part where I, where I pretty much get my most my frustration is that I actually thought that I was – 
clearly winning all three rounds just through the fact that I was I was the one you know pushing the pace. I was dictating where the fight went, and he showed no ability to get off the cage. He, um, I, it, it's almost, I, I, it almost felt like a, um, like an episode of uh, like the Twilight Zone when, <laughs> when losing that losing that fight, and and not until watching the commentating and. I kind of get, I kind of get the idea of how he could be initiating the offense, but you would think that because he's a three-time world champion, after 30, 40 seconds go by and he's not able to progress the situation, then it, it should start, you know, falling back into my favor, considering that he's the one, you know, with his back against the cage. I, since the day, first day I've learned fighting, they, the rule of thumb is, is if you can't get off the cage, you're losing. I mean, that is it, you know, and if you're the aggressor, you should be the one winning the fight, generally speaking. That's one of the big problems with mixed martial arts, man, is that the rules are open to way too much subjectivity, you know, and guys aren't going to see fights the same way. We need to fix it. I'm not, I don't know how. <laughs> I just know we need to fix it um, because you guys, yeah, work, you, I mean, you guys work too hard. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it, it is my fault, and because when, because I, I mean, I've, I, I didn't have the greatest camp going into it. Uh, this winter, I guess, for the nation, it's been kind of filled with the flu and the, you know, and sickness or whatever. And I, so I was, I was on a couple of antibiotics throughout the camp. And um, so, I mean, but that's that. I, I went into the fight, you know, ready for the dog fight, ready to work really, really hard. And I, I mean, he kind of put me out of my game by being so accepting of being pushed against the cage. And I was kind of like, oh, all right, well, I got a good view of the clock right here. I can see it run down. He's not really trying to get off. So I'll just, uh, you know, hang out here for 15, 20 seconds until he tries to start the fight off the cage. And then, you know, I'll, you know, he'll move off the cage. We'll do some dirty boxing and then go back to the neutral. I know he was a little more active on the hands and kicks, but none of them were landing. They were kind of just, you know, going up and over my head or, or they were coming short. So they're happening just in front of me. I mean, I guess my volume really wasn't that high, but uh, I mean, he only landed three or four punches. I probably only landed, you know, three or four myself. Um, but I felt like I did get the takedowns. He got one takedown, but within four seconds, I was, you know, back up on my feet. I transitioned him back into the cage and then took him down and finished the round on top. Yeah, you sure did, but you're only 29 years old. I think your best years are still ahead of you. I think that a fight like that with Lovato, I think you're going to grow from it, and I think I think it was needed. But what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I honestly think that if I were to fight Lovato again, I, it wouldn't the fight wouldn't even go the distance. I, I feel like now, I feel like his game plan was so passive aggressive that I could just walk through him. I just, uh, you know, like I said, I just. My, I went from, you know, this is going to be a battle to, oh, this is going to be now an easy win because he's just letting me, you know. It's almost like I was like I was sparring somebody that was in camp and I was like their third fresh partner and they were already exhausted. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I could feel that he wasn't, I could feel that he was not, not necessarily was like super tired, but I could tell that he was, um, you know, kind of conserving, like he didn't want to push that pace. And... I was accepting of that because I, I felt like I was in the dominant position the entire fight. I feel like I only backed up really a couple of seconds maybe in, in, in uh, the second round. But, um, yeah, no, I think any time, well, I would say not everyone, but I feel like you know, most fighters, you know, take a loss. There's, uh, you know, there's another, there's another spark added to the, you know, to the fire. There's, um, a little more motivation to, uh, you know, work hard for the next one and, and learn from it. And, that, you know, that goes for myself. It's like now I'm, you know, it's like I'll never let that happen again. I'll never, you know, be in a fight and then someone just kind of, you just kind of feel someone, you know, not really try as hard as you, so you just fight to their level. Um, I, 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 I mean, I look back now and just like, why was I even thinking that way? If, I, if he was doing that, why wouldn't I just, you know, you know, come back out, throw a few punches, and then tie back up with him because I don't have to worry about him getting his back off the cage. And then, you know, do some dirty boxing in there versus, you know, just smothering him against the cage and, uh, you know, just, I guess, assuming that the refs thought the guy with his back against the cage was losing. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, Lovato's a great fighter. I mean, he's a, 
he's not necessarily a great fighter. He's definitely a great jiu-jitsu artist. I mean, he's three-time world champion. I mean, that, that's something that's talked about. Oh, yeah. I think that's a, 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 big, a big reason why when he maybe did have his uh, arm over it. Because, I mean, I, I don't know where else his arm could have gone. I mean, it wasn't like he was, perp- I don't think, purposely to try to initiate a punch. It's like, I don't know where else a six foot four person would put their arm on a five ten, you know, wrestler sticks his head in his armpit and and uh, you know, drives him into the cage. It's, I mean really the only other option was to just maybe put his hand straight up in the air and that, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> that would look but, a little uh, weird, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean I'm I'm in the perfect height. I mean if I was six two I would probably use my head and try to pinch his arm in, but that's not practical when you go and get someone that's so tall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, I think that you're going to bounce back, man. Uh, I can't wait for your next fight. And, uh, you know, with all these these new guys coming to Bellator, there's so many exciting matchups, you know, so many possibilities now. So uh, I can't wait to see who Joe's got in mind for you, man, because I know that you're going to bounce back. I just want to see who is going to be the one that has to fight you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would like to get another year kind of like... uh the 20, 2016 where I had four fights, you know, the, you know, I only, Lovato was my second fight last year, and I, you know, I'd be lying if I was, you know, I wasn't going into the fight thinking financial reasons, I, it's, uh, you know, two, two fights a year is, uh, I mean, when you're 20, 20, 29 years old, I mean, that, that's, uh, I'm kind of reaching, like, the beginning of my ultimate prime of fighting, it's like, I want to be fighting, you know, five or six times a year, I mean, that's, if I, if it was up to me, I'd fight, I'd fight six times a year, but um, obviously there's other people that want fights too. So I would, I would like to fight at least three or four times, you know, continuously into throughout my prime, and then uh, you know have a successful career with you know with a lot of fights. I think just two fights a year is not really putting me ahead. I'm pretty much in a way of fighting from paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, no, I feel you, man. I feel you. I, I say all the time how criminally underpaid you guys are as athletes. It's uh, it's not even funny. Did you happen to see just yesterday, man, Bellator let like 13 dudes go? 13 fighters? Yeah, they let go of 13 guys, man. Oh, wow, that's crazy. You know, I didn't know, I didn't see them. Yeah. I um, had a fun line and, you know, look it up. Some of the bigger names, man, like Francis Carmont, uh, Steve Cazola, that one surprised the shit out of me. Fernando Gonzalez. Oh, He's, wow. They cut. Oh, yeah, those, I mean, those are, yeah. Crazy. Um, yeah, that, that, uh, yeah, that's shocking. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, that surprises me. Yeah, I was surprised with a couple of those names, man. But uh, they got plans for you. I know they do because I think, I mean, when you look at the Bellator middleweight roster, I mean, you have one of the very best records in the entire division. So, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, by any means, I'm just, I'm, I'm waiting. I mean, as soon as I get on the books, it's like, I think I'm trying not to be in camp now because I'm still, you know, motivated. But uh, it's like I'm kind of trying to wait so that I can get that phone call, just so I'm not, and you know. If they say eight weeks from now, I'm out in like a 15 week camp. You know what I mean? I'm, oh I'm, yeah. I'm, I feel like I'm two weeks from. I'm only two weeks from fight shape, but I don't want to get you know in fight shape and scared because you know that that that's how you uh, one get hurt in practice and two it's like sometimes when you're just you and you're training that hard for you know you know extensive periods of time, it just you kind of get run down a little bit. So I'm mm-hmm. trying to keep that itch going and just waiting for that phone call. Well, I appreciate your time, man. I, I look forward to your next fight. Uh, let me know. Let me know when uh, they get it figured out, man. I'd love to have you back on, and uh, I wish you all the best. They're awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. Anytime, man. Could you do me a quick favor? We kind of have a little tradition here. Could you say, uh, this is Chris Honeycutt, and you're listening to the Did You See That Shit podcast? This is Chris Honeycutt, middleweight fighter of Bellator MMA, and Did You See That Shit podcast. Thank you so much, Chris. You too. Have a nice day. <laughs>